Now with my Avid Pro 4848 CNC built, there are a few things that need to happen before it's truly ready for use. Those are to check the squareness of the gantry, tramming of the spindle, and to create a spoil board. Let's first jump into squaring and tramming. Squaring is fairly self-explanatory. You want to make sure your machine is square and true as your spindle moves throughout its range of motion. In my case, it's a four foot by four foot area. To check this, Avid provides files that can be used in the Vectric software that I chose to use. They also have a great video on this, so I will again default to using Avid's instructions and videos as your true guidance. This video will show you my experience following their directions. Starting with squaring, you're essentially drilling four holes at equal distances apart and then measuring their diagonal to ensure everything is even and square. If you took your time building the machine and you use the optional sensors, this squaring process is very easy. I took the time while installing my sensors and used calipers to ensure they were all set to uh, equal distances. And my first run at checking the squareness, I found it to be perfectly square. Now, as long as I remember to run the auto zero function every time I turn the machine on, I should be good to go. Tramming your spindle means to adjust it so your spindle is perpendicular to your machine in all axes. To check the tramming, you simply cut out a pocket in a piece of wood, preferably using at least a half inch bit, if not larger, with a large step over meaning there is little to no overlap where your bit is cutting on each pass. If the pocket is not perfectly flat and you can see or feel ridges in the pocket, then you need to make adjustments because your bit is actually cutting at a slight angle on each pass and it's not sitting exactly 90 degrees to the machine. Here you can see it is minimal, but there are some ridges after that first pass, so adjustment is needed. Avon CNC sells a tramming spindle mount that I purchased for an additional, I think it was $100, $105. Um, I'm sure you could get by without it, but it sure did make this process easy for me. A plate is mounted to your Z-axis and another plate is mounted to your spindle. The plate mounting to the spindle has a notch cut out of the lower right hand corner in which an eccentric bearing will be mounted. This allows you to loosen the four mounting screws that attach the spindle, turn that eccentric bearing slightly clockwise or counterclockwise, and that in turn will move the corner of the spindle plate slightly left or right, allowing you to adjust everything so the spindle is perfectly perpendicular to the machine and the spoil board. Here I zoomed in to show you that cutout or notch in the plate, and here is that eccentric bearing or offset bearing that will sit inside this notch, allowing you to adjust the squareness of the plate. The spindle is then mounted to the CNC. Once installed, it would be a good idea to insert a bit or a steel pin into the spindle and use a square to eyeball the initial setup and get it as close to 90 degrees to the machine bed as you can as you tighten the mounting screws. Again, the lower right attachment screw runs through that eccentric bearing. Here's a close-up of that bearing mounted. If adjustment is needed, this screw, along with the other mounting screws, is loosened slightly. The bearing can be turned clockwise or counterclockwise as needed. As shown earlier, my first pass using a half inch bit shows some ridges between each pass. Again, that's telling me that the bit is angled ever so slightly, and the ridges are created because the bit is cutting at that slight angle on every pass. The goal is to have no ridges. My second attempt was pretty flat, and I considered just leaving it alone at this point. However, I figured one more adjustment wouldn't hurt, 
and this third one really came out perfect. I should note, you also need to check the spindle charming in the other axis, but mine was perfect and because of the way the machine is built, the odds of you having to make any adjustments in this axis are slim to none. Now with this process complete, it's time to move on to a more permanent spoil board.